Hey there, students. As you might know by now, I'm Chris. I've been a teacher of English as a second language for about 15 years now, and I'm offering the only online ESL course for politics, history, and other social sciences. If you're interested in taking it, send me an email at the address in the description below, and you can start learning all the useful stuff I can teach you. Today we're talking about labels. A label is a word. We label things with words so that we can make sense of the world. So most labels are just useful words that make things simpler instead of having to describe everything all the time. But sometimes labeling something can limit that thing. People like to label themselves and others. In this case, a label is a word or set of words given to a person to describe what they are or how they think. If I call you black, white, an American, Chinese, a doctor, a father, a woman, an idiot, or a revolutionary, I'm labeling you or giving you a label. Why do we use labels for people? Well, again, labels are words, after all, aren't they? Label th labeling things and people usually just makes things easier. For example, I could say I'm, I could say quite truthfully that I'm an anarchist. Um, if, if I say I'm an anarchist, I can identify my beliefs without having to explain all of them every time I want to use the word. And I can find other people who think like me, and that can be useful for all kinds of reasons. That said, the word anarchist is not always a useful label, because most people don't know what it means. In fact, labels, um, like anarchists, are often used to dismiss people out of hand. What? You're an anarchist? Oh, well, then, then you must be wrong. You could never understand. We'll never see eye to eye. <laughs> or you have nothing to contribute to this discussion. I've heard people dismiss others for almost any label. But who says the other person isn't worth listening to? That's why some labels are simplistic. They're just too simple. They don't tell you what you really need to know. They may or may not tell you about a person's beliefs. After all, someone could still call themselves an anarchist and believe things that are against the ideas of anarchism. Many labels that we use are supposed to be opposites of each other. In American domestic politics, for example, you hear the words liberal and conservative thrown around a lot. These words reflect very broad sets of beliefs, and they change with the times. Liberals are supposed to believe in using taxpayer money to provide schools, hospitals, insurance, and welfare for the poor, disabled, or unemployed. They're expected to support the Democratic Party. That's another inaccurate label, by the way. One of the two big political parties in the U.S. Conservatives, meanwhile, are supposed to believe in strong police and military forces, but when it comes to schools, hospitals, and the rest of it, they tend to prefer the private sector or business as, dis as opposed to government. Um, they're expected to vote for the Republican Party. That's the other big party in the U.S. But these labels are a bit simplistic. For one thing, a liberal might not believe everything a liberal is supposed to believe, and likewise for a conservative. They might not vote the way other liberals or conservatives vote. Uh, 
Moreover, while liberals and conservatives are thought of as opposites, if you look at what their beliefs are, there's a lot of overlap. All kinds of things they have in common. Um, all of them believe the dominant ideology of the society they grew up in. They all believe the state should exist. It should have authority. They all believe in capitalism in one form or another. And don't worry, if you want to know more about ideology, the state, capitalism, I'm going to make videos on them too. For now, ideology means beliefs, state is like government, and capitalism is the dominant economic system of the world right now. Uh, but since we're told, uh, sorry, since they're told that they're opposites, many liberals and conservatives think of themselves as enemies. So labels can have the effect not of simplifying things necessarily, but of killing a discussion, closing minds, making enemies, and tearing at the social fabric itself. They're, they're used by the people in power to divide us. So be careful which labels you adopt and how you use them. I'd like to make one more point on this subject so that we can really think really critically as much as we can in this short time about labels. A writer named Max Stirner wrote a book in German whose title is usually translated as the ego and its own or something similar to that and in that book he attacked just about every idea that existed in its in his time um, from the state to religion and even morality itself he concluded that these things were what is usually translated as spooks <laughs> A uh, spook is a kind of ghost, but a ghost that haunts your mind. They're ideas created by other people, often a long time in the past, to reduce us to slaves. Sometimes labels are accurate. If I call myself an anarchist, it's because my beliefs align with other anarchists. If we call someone a doctor, it's probably because they passed some exams and they practice medicine. But many labels come from spooks. We call ourselves hardworking taxpayers. But why? What's, what exactly is the virtue of working hard and paying taxes? We call ourselves law-abiding citizens, saying we abide by the law, in other words. But why? The law is the rules forced on us by the people in power. The law is not something we should believe in, as in believe it's good and virtuous and worthwhile. The law, or the rule of law, is a spook. And when we call ourselves citizens, we're saying that we're the property of the state and that we don't have an existence outside the state. We label each other liberals and conservatives. But why? Why do we hold those beliefs in the first place? And why do we dismiss other people for having the supposed opposite? We, we talk about good people and bad people, but that comes from an idea of morality that other people gave us. Why don't we come up with our own ideas of morality and, and see other people with more nuance than just good or bad folks? We label people by race, black, white, and brown, and those things have some kind of meaning because of history, 
but biologically, they mean very little. Racism is real, but race is a spook. Finally, one spook Stirner didn't talk about, as far as I know, is gender. We call ourselves men and women, but those words imply whatever gender roles our culture, our society has given us. They exclude people who don't identify as male or female. But those people are still people. What if you call someone a man? Someone you call a man doesn't do everything a man is supposed to do in your culture. Gender roles are another spook. Stirner's point was, if we want to be free, we should clean our minds of spooks and figure out what's right for ourselves. So let's review today's vocabulary. Uh, I use this word anarchist to describe myself. It's people who uh, oppose uh, hierarchy, illegitimate hierarchy, authority like government and capitalism and racism, that kind of that kind of hierarchy. To dismiss someone out of hand is to say something like, oh, you're you're from that country, you think that way, oh, well, then you must be wrong. It's to dismiss, I dismiss you, oh, you're wrong. Um, to see eye to eye is agree, just to agree, and you can always say, we don't see eye to eye. Maybe it sounds like we're fighting, we fight a lot, we don't see eye to eye. Uh, the word simplistic. Simplistic is when something is too simple. You reduce something to, to be much simpler than it really is. Like labeling yourself a liberal when maybe you believe other things that, that liberals don't believe, too. We, talk, we mentioned the private sector. The private sector is business, basically. Um, it's supposed to be opposed to the public sector, which is government, although, of course, they work together all the time. <laughs> um, we learned the word overlap. You can say there is a lot of overlap between those two, those two ideas, whatever they are. There's a lot of overlap, or they overlap. We talked about the social fabric. Fabric is uh, what you might make clothes out of. So if we tear the social fabric, we, we break society apart. We heard the word morality. Morality is just what, what we say is right and wrong. Um, but again, it could be a bit of a spook. Uh, this, was, this was Max Stirner's term. Most people don't use this term, you should understand that. It's mostly just when you're talking about Max Scherner. <laughs> and the word virtue, virtue is just something that's good. Um, some people say things like, I don't know, patience is a virtue. It's a bit of a cliche, but patience is a virtue. In other words, uh, it's good to be patient. Something that is a virtue is virtuous. And finally, to abide by the law or to be a law-abiding citizen means to follow the law. But you don't always have to follow the law. <laughs> That's my first video on thinking critically about the labels that we use. Part two on this subject will be coming out next Sunday. See you then.